Hi everyone and welcome to a new edition of You Are My Borough with myself, Scott Wilson and Dom Shaw from the Northern Echo. Lord Seguat, um, we've got plenty to get our teeth into. Obviously, all thing transfers, the transfer window now closed. Uh, pretty dramatic final day in the end for Borough with things happening and perhaps more importantly not happening. We'll get our teeth into all of that. We'll talk about the Cardiff win. Uh, we'll, we'll have a look at where Borough are. Um, obviously heading into now the first international break and reflect on the early bits of the season. So absolutely loads to go at. But I think, Dom, we have to start with um, some bitterly, bitterly sad news over the weekend. Uh, Sol Bamba, who obviously didn't spend a lot of time at Borough, but, but, but um, made an absolutely massive impression during the time that he did spend a year, sadly died at the age of 39. You wrote what I thought... Um, was a lovely kind of tribute piece on the Echo website and in the paper. Um, I mean, it came it came as a real kind of jolt from the blue, I think, over the weekend, didn't it? Because we all know of Sol's health issues and the battles that he's fought during his, his, his well, his career and, and obviously his life. Um, and it was just a real kind of shock moment, I think, when the news broke that, that he sadly passed away. Yeah, um, like... Gutting, wasn't it? Just, just absolute gut wrenchingly devastating, and, and I think probably more so because it came as such a shock as well. Um, yeah, I'd, I fall asleep Saturday night, and then I woke up with my, my, my phone going, and I'd seen it, and just kind of laid there for a couple of hours afterwards, like just absolutely taken aback by it, really. And uh, it was just such a good bloke, wasn't he? I mean, before we talk about him as a player. Um, and and like what a career he had, but but as a bloke, just a brilliant, brilliant fella. Had all the time in the world for you. I remember the first time I interviewed him. Um, so he, he'll have been at Cardiff at the time, or I might have left. Yeah, I think he'll have still been at Cardiff, and it will have been when, like, excuse the timeline on this, but it was when Neil Warnock came to Borough, and I was doing yeah. a piece. I was doing a piece on kind of what 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 to expect, what it's like to play for Neil Warnock, and what he's like, is it, what's it like in the dressing room and all that. And um, I spoke to a, a contact down at Cardiff who passed me on Sol's number, and I messaged Sol Bamber and asked him. Uh, I messaged Sol and asked him if he if he was all right to speak, and he did. He said, yeah, straight, give us a bell this after. And and I remember speaking to him that afternoon and thinking, does, does he think I'm, I'm someone else here? Because it was the first <laughs> time I spoken to him. And he was talking as though we were best of mates. And it just that familiarity, I think. Um, yeah. And we got him on here, didn't we? I was just going to say, of course, he, he was on here, wasn't he? And, yeah. and, and, you know, reminiscing about, obviously, the old Trafford night, the, the Bournemouth reception, and and just, just how quickly he felt at home at Borough and and I think that was it wasn't it the fact that you know he wasn't he wasn't a Borough player for very long he didn't y yes he had that magical moment at Old Trafford but you know it's not like he was part of a promotion team or a title winning team or anything like that and yet and yet he does have a special place in in Borough fans' hearts I think listen you know there, there are other clubs Cardiff being the obvious one where his association is much deeper but but he certainly left a big mark with Borough and it is, and and, I, and you think, if, if you think, I'm kind of thinking here of kind of borough heroes of the last, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 years. And obviously there are plenty. But Sol Bamba comes to mind because of obviously, sadly, what's gone on. But but it would have done anyway. George Friend, obviously. Yeah. Tony Mowbray, kind of like top of the pack, really. And and, mm. uh, and I think what are all them, what do those three have in common? Forget, forget what they might have achieved or might have done as players. All just brilliant fellas, good, yeah. good blokes with good yeah. hearts who put other people first. Uh, and, and I think that's what struck with Sol more than anything. I think obviously the fans knew what he'd been through, but could see that he was just a, a really good fella who instantly bought into what the club was about, what the area was about. Um, and I mean, I wrote in that tribute piece that Redka Town paid tribute. Yeah. And, and I remember speaking to him when he was on trial. I, I, again, obviously, I had his number by this point, so I rang him to see if he'd do a piece on what he'd been through because he, he hadn't really talked too much about his cancer battle at that stage, what he'd been through and his hopes for the future. And he's on trial and, and, I, and I said to him, like, are you playing? Are you playing for a contract then? You know, do you want to stay at Borough? And we've interviewed enough footballers to know or to be prepared <laughs> for the token response. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just taking each day as it comes. And he said, well, 
I, I can't lie to you. Yeah, we've been talking about it. I'm hoping that we're going to agree a contract. And like, you're kind of struck by the yeah, yeah, yeah. the honesty, and honesty yeah. from it. Um, but but I remember that he played that friendly at Redcar Town, and afterwards, uh, talking to um, people who were involved at the club, who were saying that he stayed back for ages, speaking to fans, officials, did an interview with their YouTube channel. Um, again, stuff like that. People remember stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. It's just. I was driving back from Portsmouth on Sunday and they were like going in and out of various tributes to him. And uh, as, as sad as it was, I think it's great to hear that everyone has the same yeah. view on him, really. And everyone yeah. kind of shares their own brilliant memories. And it's just gutting three young kids. Family. Well, I was just going to say, it, it goes without saying that our hearts absolutely go out to his family. Um, you know, can't even begin to comprehend what they're going through. Um, and I'm sure every Borough fan would would say absolutely the same. Right, transfers. Um, the transfer window has swung shut, as I think we're contractually obliged to say. Um, and, by, and by God, were we ready for it to close on Friday night? <laughs> I bet. I absolutely bet. Um, I mean... We'll go through the ins and outs in a minute. But I think we have to start with the deal that didn't happen. Emmanuel Latterlaff, I mean, all, all through the summer, we've been saying on these vids, Borough are so strong. They don't want to lose Vandenberg. They don't want to lose Hackney. They don't want to lose Latterlaff. But the caveat is that something might come out the blue. Well, it did come out the blue, really. Ipswich making their move. Um very late in the window, Borough deciding, A, it was too late for them to do anything with the money, even if they wanted to accept it, and B, the money just wasn't at the level that would have made them feel that they had to do it. So very strong from Borough saying, this deal is not going to happen. So I think that's the first thing, the fact that Borough stood very strong. We then obviously had the latter laugh situation. Um, I mean, you know, clearly his head had been turned to some degree, there was the, is he going to travel? Is he not going to travel? In the end, obviously, he does go down to Cardiff. He comes off the bench. So, I mean, I guess, firstly, what does it say about Borough that they're able to stand firm and make that decision? And secondly, are there any concerns now about Latterlath for the rest of the season? Or can a line be drawn under this fairly swiftly? What do you reckon? Well, I think I think just starting on the second one, the, the fact that he travelled on Friday night on his own in the car down and then came off the bench on Saturday, ultimately only time will tell on that. And, and we, we won't know until, what, three, four, five, six, seven, eight weeks down the line. But just judging on the evidence of what we've got, the fact he travelled on Friday night, met up with the squad, was involved yeah. on Saturday, I think is the strongest indication you can have, really, that... That um that the will of both parties now be able to put this behind them and, and move on. Um on Borough, I mean you've just huge credit to Steve Gibson, haven't you? Because it's all right saying, isn't it, at the start of the mm. summer, we're not going to sell our best players, we don't want to sell our best players. But when when there's bids on the table, and the bids for Latte Lath in the final days wasn't the only one, by the way. There were bids for Rav Vandenberg in the final weeks of the window that Borough rejected. Um and there, there was there was interest, if not bids, for Hayden Hackney earlier in the summer, or, or kind of loose inquiries. So Borough were absolutely true to the word there. Um, if you lose your best your best striker in the final days of the window and the final hours of the window, really, from a football perspective, it doesn't matter how much money you get, does it? You're not going to be able to replace him. Um, but but I, the, I, mean, I mean, it was a bonkers day, wasn't it? Because it did come out of the blue. It's not yeah. like built and built and built i think the one kind of one slight concern and we'd raised this the agents have done a lot of talking um, yeah. and that was I, mean, I remember you saying that earlier in the summer that if, if latte lath isn't at all a concern is his is his agent um and as you say when a premier league club comes in and all the riches that comes with that you, you, yeah, had his head turned and, and he won't be the only one. He won't be the first. He certainly isn't the first and, and won't be the last to do that. Um, and, and this is where I think it got complicated because kind of from Borough's side, he didn't travel. But the kind of messages were, look, he's, he's not refusing to travel. This yeah. isn't Emmanuel Latilath going on strike. It's more just as things stand now. It kind of like this uncertainty swirling. He didn't feel like he was in the right frame of mind from what we gather kind of spent the next couple of hours locked in talks or um, with club officials at Rockcliffe just to kind of try and settle the situation down, really. 
uh, and they've made it clear to Latte Lafro, but we're, 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 we're not we're not accepting a bid. We're not we're not selling, and obviously Borough were able to move off move forward on it. But I think the only other thing to stress before I come back to you is um, throughout it all, really, and afterwards, Borough were kind of at pains to point out that they, it's all been respectful, um, yeah. and they didn't have a problem with. With Manu, the, you know that they, 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 they kind of were sympathetic and understood the position he was in. Obviously, the frustration was at the end of a brilliant window, which we'll talk about. This kind of threatened to overshadow the whole thing. So yeah, that, that's obvious frustration. But um, it, it didn't get messy. You know, this wasn't a case of hammering door downs and demanding to move or anything like that. And and I think all the indications were at the end of the window that we'll yeah we'll have no problems putting this behind us now and moving on because the slight concern sorry one last fact that there are some fans who will undoubtedly feel hurt by it um angered by it and ultimately football being football the only way for latte laugh to 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 ease that is by getting on the pitch and scoring goals again yeah. isn't it but he got um, a good reception when he came on at Cardiff, it he? which I think yeah, is yeah. telling you know what I mean I, I, yeah. as you rightly say you know some borough fans will think well you know he shouldn't be having his head turned at all. He's a borough player. He should be. Yeah, that's all fine. But I think I think the general feeling will be: Look, this has happened. Let's all get over it. Let's get back to Latalaf score and the fans singing his name, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I think Carrick will be important here because for all that he's an inexperienced manager in some respects, <laughs> he's been all of his playing career at, at, at clubs and obviously the one obvious club where. You know, crises have happened at, at that club. Players have come, players have gone, players have been unavailable. You know, there's, he he will he will have seen how Sir Alex Ferguson managed very difficult situations, not massively dissimilar to this. And, and you'd like to think he'll have taken quite a lot from that, and and will be able to deal with this situation. He certainly seems to deal with it pretty well so far. And I thought Carrick's quotes on Saturday after the Cardiff game were were excellent. Really, um, kind of saying everything. That, that needed to be said. Um, I mean, part of me at first, you kind of look and you think, oh, I'm surprised he's not playing, starting. Because you would think, does it make more of an issue of it not starting him? But then you think, well, he got he got to Wales in the early hours of the morning. Yeah. Borough obviously had to plan for the possibility of being without him, given what yeah. had gone on earlier in the day. So that made complete sense. I thought Carrick's quotes were excellent on it. Um and, and I think Borough will now feel, well, I know they do feel confident they can put this behind them and and move on. And I don't think they're concerned at all that Latte Laugh's the type of character who will now let this kind of hang over him and that there'll be any hangover when players yeah. resume. I think this international break's helpful because it just helps everything sell. I think yeah. it's helpful after, an interna- after a transfer window full stop, isn't it? Yeah. Let's players get settled and just yeah. gives everyone the opportunity to breathe. Um, and obviously, last lap is away, isn't he? So yeah. he'll come back, hopefully, line drawn under it, back yeah. in the training before the Preston game and, and when we go from there. And, and, and I think you, you touched it there with the deal that didn't happen. For all we're going to talk here about all the players brought in, the deals that didn't happen will prove to be just as important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's been a bold window for Borough. It has the look of being a hugely successful window. Obviously, we don't know a time, but it, but now it has the look of, of an extremely impressive window. And that's without considering the fact that you've kept those three players who we talked yeah. about again and again and again. And ah, it looks a strong squad now, doesn't it? It really does. Well, let's have a look then at um, Inns to start with. So... Um, Hopefully, this is a definitive list running along the bottom of the screen. Um, obviously, right at the start of the window, we had Luke Ayling re-signing. Um, we had Delano Bergzorg. We had Aidan Morris. They've obviously settled in nicely already this season. Um, we had Harley Hunt coming from Swindon, which at the time felt like a, a, a kind of youth team signing, but increasingly looks like it will have an impact on the first team. Mika Hamilton from Man City. Tommy Conway, obviously, in from Bristol City. Neto Borges to fill the gap at left back that, that was created um, when Bangura got his injury. George Edgmanson feels like cover at centre half where there's been a lot of injuries. And then probably, you know, we say Lata Laf was the surprise one. Ben Doak felt like a surprise one right at the end, really. It, it, it kind of came from nowhere in the last week of the window. Maybe start there. I mean, what, what do you think he's going to offer? 
Well, um, without going over kind of the ones we've touched on in previous videos, if we just look at kind of the last week, the really, latest, yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I, I think on Dork, first of all, with a week to go, the window, if you'd have asked anyone at Borough, are, are you going to sign a right winger? The, the, the response that have been, I think, puzzled looks and no, we've brought in Mika Hamilton, we're well stocked across the forward line. But as we've talked about, I think Borough, the one thing we've shown is that is the, the willing to act instinctively when they feel they require it and be flexible. And, and when the possibility of signing Ben Doak cropped up in the final days of the window, they quickly acted. From what I gather, Doak made it quickly clear he was keen on the Borough move as soon as he learned that interest. Borough and Liverpool have strong links anyway, thanks to Jonathan Woodgate from when he was a scout yeah. there between his spells at the club. Um, and I think you've got to remind yourself here that, or I had to remind myself when I was writing a piece about him this morning, that he is only 18, not 19 in November. You know, this is his first loan move. Let's just settle down and not get too excited. But when you read everything that's been said about him, it's hard not to get excited, really. You've got kind of Jurgen Klopp saying, oh my God, at the start of a, a summary of kind of what his verdict was after the winger came in. Virgil van Dijk calling him the Tasmanian devil because he darts about here, there, and everywhere and, and is a pest. You've got John McGinn saying this morning that he'd linked up with a Scotland camp and said maybe things would have been different if I'd have been fit to play for Scotland in the European Championship. So I think that's kind of an insight into the character and the yeah. confidence, really. And I was reading some quotes from John Carver, who's obviously assistant manager at Scotland, before the Euros, when he'd linked up for the first time with the Scotland squad. And he said he'd never met him before. This is his first link up. But within within kind of hours of first meeting him, you feel like you've known him forever. And he's quickly found his feet and settled. That bodes well, doesn't it, for for, yeah. for Boyer when he links up with the squad. And Again, like, you know, let's look at two of our, out of ourselves. His first loan, he's, he's still a teenager, but he but he's been a Liverpool first team player and 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 there is excitement about it. It'll be interesting. I mean, if everyone's fit, I was, that's time, just where I was gonna go next. It'll be fascinating, won't it? Who who's who's got those four places? Well, at various points this summer, we've said maybe they're looking a little bit short on the left. Then it switched to maybe they're looking a little bit short on the right. You've got Jones, Hamilton, Dork, potentially Marcus Force at some stage, probably Iamart for the right. You've got obviously Riley McGree, Delano Bergzorg battling it out on the left with the option of pulling a Conway over there or a um, Azaz yeah. over there or a Gilbert over there if you needed to. I mean, in terms of, you know, let, let's say that front, that front three behind Latalath. Um, my goodness, there are some options there, aren't there? Because yeah, Gilbert's um, looked really good so far this season. And I, and I, if you were saying everyone's fit, who's your three? I honestly wouldn't really know where to start. No. You'd have, you'd have, you'd have thought McGree because of how influential he was at the back end of that first season. We know that McGree, what McGree's capable of, but then obviously he's had his injury troubles. I know Finners has is divisive, but but I really like him and I and I think he's a good fit in that tent. But then I think Gilbert was the kind of one real positive to come from that Stoke game. Micah Hamilton, we were, they were excited about when he signed, but I think the kind of feeling with Hamilton is um they've signed him on a long-term contract, let him find his feet. And, yeah. and, and the kind of the suggestion seems to be it's in the second half of the season when you'll you, you'll see the best of Hamilton. Um and you would think that with Dork. Let him find his feet. Let him settle yeah. down. But then everything you read is this fella, um, or I say fella, this young lad is going to come in and 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 be desperate to hit the ground running. Um, I mean, I, I'm, I'm where, just just finally, sorry, quickly, yeah. it's going to be one of them where I, I know the bench is swollen these days, but there are players who are going to miss out on the squad. There are players yeah. who are going to miss out on places in the squad when everyone's fit. I mean, I'm, I'm with you where I, I think at the minute it's probably still Jones, Azaz, McGree. I'm not sure it will be by Christmas. No, no. I think that, no. you know, Hamilton, Dork, Bergzorg. Conway's look. Conway's Conway, look. you know, Conway's the team somewhere. I'd be surprised if if um, if we were still saying it was it was the three and, and those younger lads have barely had a sniff because it's going to be fascinating to see how that plays out. It really is. And that's before, and then you go back, and we haven't seen we haven't seen everyone fit in midfield yet. So when you've got yeah. House and 
Morris and ha and Hackney because Morris has to play, doesn't he? On the I think on the evidence, the evidence of, so in the season, the back we haven't seen anyone near any, nowhere near everyone fit there. Yeah. Um, on on the back on 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 the defence, both Borges, well Borges obviously, but then Edmondson felt necessary as well, didn't yeah. it? I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I think Borges, you know, from the moment all the um, Ryan Giles talk was flying around, it was pretty clear that Borough knew how bad the Bangura injury was and knew, knew they were going to have to sign a left-back at some point. And it's been a shaky start to the season for Engel, hasn't it? I think it's fair to say. So I think, yeah. you know, that that feels like a place that Borges potentially can very quickly make his own. Edmondson feels different in that it feels like short-term comfort. For the next month, Borough could still be, you know, struggling for centre halves. We still don't really know where we're at with Fry and Lenahan. Um, Vandenberg, obviously, still out at the moment. Um, it, it only needed Matt Clark to go down, and Borough were going to be in serious trouble at centre half. So that's one that does feel, you know, pretty short termish. And, and fair enough, sometimes you have to make those short term signings. Borges, I think, is probably different because, like we were saying, it, he could be Burr's left back for the whole of the season, I imagine. I think he will be. I think I think I think it'd be a major surprise now if he wasn't, wouldn't yeah, it? Um it would. he's kind of a long term target, delighted to get um everything everything that points to the fact that he's a he's a really good fit on and off the pitch. I was over at Rockcliffe last Thursday, it'll have been, and Mark Drury from BBC Tees had just interviewed him. Um that interview's out now. It's it's really good, it's worth a listen. But he said what a what a really nice fellow! What a good bloke! He was yeah. uh, kind of struck by by him, and that, that's what we've been told before. And that obviously they like him as a player, but they really like his character as well. Character. And think he'll be a good fit. Um, uh, yeah, at the back, that that Edmondson one felt necessary. The, the all the indications are that Rav they expect to have back after the yeah. national break. Um, I think Dyke Steele's done well, by the way. Coming yeah, in. because yeah, at the start of the summer. If you were pointing to the players that were going to leave, then Dyke Steele would have been near the top of the list, wouldn't you? But he's come in, and, and I think he's done well. Ailing shown his versatility. But as you say, you couldn't run the risk, could you, of of, of leaving themselves short in there? So so that felt wise. And just in general, to wrap up, looking at those players now running across the bottom of the screen, I know time will always be the ultimate judge of a transfer window. But as we sit here now, it has the look of the most impressive window at Borough, I can remember for a long time. Yeah, yeah, I, I would completely agree with that. Um, and and you know we keep on banging this drum, but but surely is a reflection of the fact that the house is in order now, and that makes yeah. such a big difference. That the right people are in the right positions. There's actually harmony between the recruitment operation and the head coach and the rest of the coach and staff. And 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 you end up with a window like this where you look at those names going along the bottom, and every transfer makes sense. Yeah, it doesn't feel like. Well, why have they bought him? Because someone's been banging the drum for him, and, and others have had to fall into line, which we all know in the past. Let's go to outs. The big thing, as we've said, is that there are no big yeah. names in here. Um, Paddy McNair released, Liam Roberts released, Jamie Jones released, offered a contract, decided to go elsewhere, whatever you want to call it. Hayden Coulson left. That was always likely. AJ Bridge gone. Josh. Corbin obviously on loan to Millwall. Sammy Silvera left on loan. Sonny Finch left on loan. We've also got um, Pharrell Willis, who um, should probably be on there as well. Fringe first team player. Um, I mean, the, the key thing is none of the big boys have left, isn't it? Which is where we started this chat. Yeah, if 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 we were sat four months ago and we were looking at that list at the bottom going across, you'd look and think. Yeah, that that I can see all that makes sense, yeah. can't you? There's no high profile in there, no shocks, no surprises, no real curveballs. I think the one that stands out, obviously, is is Josh Coburn. But but I think I think that move makes sense for all parties. Yeah. I really I really like Coburn, and I think it'll be fascinating to see how he fares at having a full season of regular football in the championship. We've said on here before, haven't we? That's really the great unknown with Josh. We didn't know yeah. that. Well, he started well enough at the weekend. Yeah, he's getting off, getting off to a goal-scoring start. So, I, so I think that just gives everyone the opportunity to see how he fares and then take stock again next summer. You know what division Borough are going to be in. You know how Coburn's fared. There's yeah. no kind of panic with the with the contract. So that makes you probably, sense. You probably know what is going to happen the latter lap another twelve months down the line. Yeah, 
you know, it is going to be an issue. There's no getting away from that. And and I think the other one is Finch. That that makes sense as well, doesn't it? That has the look of being a good move there, I think. Um, yeah. I, I was listening to Neil Madison on BBC Tees at the weekend talking about it because obviously he has a lot to do with the with the young lads who go out on loan. And, and he'd said there was plenty of interest in him, which doesn't come as any surprise. No. It feels like that's just a good fit at MK with with the way they play, um, the, the the style there, the club. They've done stuff with them in the past, so I think that's another one that's his first loan move away, isn't it? And yeah. he needs it because yeah, he does. We were talking about all those options there. Well, regardless of how highly Michael Carrick rates him, he wasn't going to get a kick, was he, this season? Yeah. When you look at who's above him, in front of him, is there a slight surprise that that McCabe? Because you could you could argue he's in the same position, couldn't you? Really, I think I think the only difference there is you 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 want it. So if you get an injury in that forward area of the pitch, there's no panic, yeah. is there? If yeah. you get an injury, say if God forbid, Howson, uh, Hackney or Morris suffer a long term injury or a serious injury, you then probably like one suspension or one niggle or whatever you away from yeah. looking slightly short. And we've said this previously, haven't we? That. Carrick rarely, really sends the young lads who oh, are that's very on, true. out on loan. And he talks a lot, doesn't he, about having um, how they learn loads from just being in and around it, being on the training pitches every day. So how, how much football McCabe will get, I'm not sure. But I don't think it's really a surprise that he, he hasn't. He didn't. Oh, no. And that's where, and I, you know, we don't want to labour on this because it's a week old now. That's where I think the Stoke defeat's disappointing because yes. there are so many players who would have benefited from Three or four more cup Three games. or four extra games. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Off the back of that Stoke game, Borough go to Cardiff and win. And you know, while it's been a it's been a good start to the season, I felt like a big win at the weekend, didn't it? I think if if Borough hadn't won that game, off the back of all the latter last stuff, off the back of the Stoke hiding, I think it might have felt a little bit different than it feels now going into the national break. With what I think, but Borough seventh, um, you know, well placed. They've just won that that away game. Um, it's been a decent start, hasn't it? It hasn't been a spectacular start, I don't think. And, and that's probably, you know, the Derby defeat is obviously the one that stands out as as the disappointment. The Stoke one, you know, you can probably box off in the Carabao Cup. Um, but it was a big win, I think. Yeah, I think it was because um, obviously it wasn't going to be a decisive game either way. But if you go into the international break, on four points, having lost to the team that were bottom of the league and hadn't won a game yet and look pretty ordinary, to yeah. say the least. I mean, you watched them on the first weekend of the season, didn't you, against Cardiff? Yeah, and, and I kind of said that. You tipped them to go down before, didn't you? And then again yeah. after that game. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think clearly there'd have been no panic inside the club. I mean, hellfire, they weren't panicking after not winning a game for seven games last season. So there'd have been... No panic, and they looked at the bigger picture. But I think it just helps. It just helps, kind of, um, the, offer a bit of a springboard, really, going into the next stage. And just yeah. that one win. I think you look at it now, um, and you think, well, seven points out of twelve, one defeat, where you're still thinking, how on earth did they lose that game? Yeah. That was a freak, a freak goal they conceded, and a freak defeat, really. So you got seven points out of twelve without really finding the feet yet, with a load yeah. of key players out injured, and with several summer signings still kind of finding the feet or, or, or getting up to speed. Um, and I think it has the look of, of of being a really good base to build from next year. And, and that Preston game coming off the break, and then obviously it's Sunderland after that. That Preston game, I think, is a, um, I'm going to say kind, but certainly winnable, isn't it? That, there could yeah. be a lot worse games coming out of the break. If you were to win that and get 10 points out of 15, well, you're going to be in the top four or five. Um, and and this feeling of kind of calm and togetherness behind the scenes, there's also going to be a bit of feel-good factor as well, isn't there, and real optimism. Yeah, I think I think it's been a really, a really solid start. I mean, if you from four games, what would you have, what would you have looked at and Thought Borough would have taken before those four games. Um, well, nine. It was, yeah, it was a reasonably inviting start, wasn't mm. it? You know, there's no, there's no kind of getting away from that. A very winnable home game, which they did win. Derby away, you know, we all know how it ended up, but it, it felt like a game that they could, they could go and win. Um, 
Portsmouth obviously felt like a winnable game, and and then Cardiff are one of the worst teams in the league. So I think I think had had they got less than they've ended up with, I think it would have been a a disappointment to be perfectly oh, honest. Oh, yeah, I think definitely. I think I think seven is fine. Yeah. You know, I, I I don't think it's like I say, I don't think it's exceptional. I think it could have been better, but I think it's fine. Um, and and uh, you know, and 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 as you've said, Preston at home feels like a really good chance to make it to ten, and then all of a sudden you you're going into that Sunderland away game, which is going to be absolutely massive. Well, the way well, that, that, has, that has the look of being a championship title decided, doesn't it? <laughs> Already, doesn't it? Just doesn't it? Just um, Matt Clark. Top of the goal scoring charts. Yeah. I mean, we, we we were singing his praises before the start of the season, saying he absolutely deserves to start at centre half. I don't think we thought that he'd be the top scorer at this stage. Um, is there anything he can't do? I mean, God, yeah. what, what a signing he's he's turned out to be. Really, when you think of what how good he's been in the second half of last season, and, and a year ago, if you'd have said that. A year down the line, you're going to be talking about a defender who's who was Borough's best player in the second half of the season, has started the season as Borough's best player, has scored two goals and is a top of the, Matt Clark would have been bottom of that list, wouldn't he? He would yeah. not have come yeah. into you thinking. Um, and we interviewed what, what game will it have been after the Portsmouth game? I spoke to him um, down pitch side after that game, and, and I said to him, I, I, I'm kind of reluctant to go over all the injury stuff as well, but. I feel like again, but I feel like you've got to because the, of, the, of the extremes of both sides. Really, he had so long out, and then yeah. he's come back and been so good since he's come back. And 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 I just kind of asked him what what got you through then during that time because we've spoken to. I remember speaking to Kieran Scott earlier this summer where he was saying that players have had this injury and never come back. So to yeah. come back and play at the level he has. Michael Carrick has talked about it. What what got you through? And he said, "Well, obviously it's 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 frustrating, but I never stop believing, and I never stop thinking I've got something to offer. I never stop yeah. coming on a Saturday and watching the game and thinking I can still offer something th- something to this side." Now, if he'd have said that to us to a year ago, you'd have probably said, "Well, yeah, if that if that's what helps you through it." But <laughs> well, yeah. how, like how fire is he proving it? He's we. A couple of months ago, we are talking about if everyone's fit, who plays at the back. Well, I think it's nailed on Clark and Vandenberg. I don't think, at the minute, I don't think there's any any dispute. Is there any argument? No, I, I remember speaking to him at Borough's, at the Christmas party. You know, Borough do the Christmas party for the kind of kids and families and stuff. Last, well, last Christmas, obviously. Yeah. Um, would be the sensible time of a Christmas party, wouldn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, and, uh, and I remember talking to him then and, 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 and him saying very similar things that, you know, I know I've still got things to offer. I know I can do this. I can do this. And in the back of my mind, I remember thinking, yeah, you know, fair play, well well on you, but I think there's a good chance we're going to see very little of you actually out on the pitch. How wrong can you be? Because no, like you, say, you know, to, to turn your career around like that, fair play, it's been absolutely brilliant. Um International break. Michael Carrick was interesting because he was saying um, at the weekend, wasn't he? You know that that in in past international breaks, it's kind of been a free hit for him, and he's been able to have two weeks of work because pretty much all the players have been there. I think this time um, it's either ten or eleven players that Borough have away. I think is it maybe ten and eleven if you count Silvera or somewhere around there. I mean, it's a very different feel to it this time, isn't it? And, and you know, Michael Carrick's not going to be getting a lot of his squad back until a couple of days before that Preston game. No, and that includes Ben Dork, who's obviously at Scotland yeah. with, with with Tommy Conway. Um, ideally, you'd have those players in now, wouldn't you, for a fortnight to work on the on the training pitch and kind of get to grips with things. But I guess that the, the kind of flip flip of it is that's what happens when you sign good good players. players. Yeah. That's what happens when you have good players. That's what happens when you're at the top of the championship. And I think the other beauty is, you were talking about Carrick's experiences as a player. Well, I mean, what must the Man United training ground have looked like during the <laughs> yeah. break? Um, yeah. So I, I, don't, I, I think he'll be kind of well, well versed on how, how, what to do and what not to do. Um, and you would think coming out the break, the, the, the team going into that next game, I mean, they won against Cardiff. So do you yeah. keep the same team or does Latte Lath come back in? I mean, that's one for next week. But um, I th- as I said earlier, I think it's a good time for a break to you, just to take stock yes. now, really. In the first month of the season, international break, you've got your signings in. It feels like 
almost like right it really starts now doesn't it yeah i think you're right and i think as we've said earlier especially with the latter laugh thing i think it just it's it, it gives a natural break to that and it means mm. It's much less of an issue next time we sit down with Michael Carrick what, at the back end of next week. It's two weeks old then. Latalas back in the fold. He's done whatever he's done on international duty. I still think it'll be interesting whether he goes straight back in. And he's going to, isn't he? He's going to go straight back That's in. Awesome. Yeah, yeah number so. nine leading the line against Preston in the same way that if Vandenberg's fit, I think he goes straight back yeah. in as well. I, you know, I don't think there's an awful lot of doubt about that. But that is for a future vid. We'll chew the fat on that um, next week. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for all your support. Uh, if you're watching on the YouTube channel, then like, subscribe. Um, let us know anything you want us to talk about or chat through on the comments. Um, if you're listening on one of the various podcast platforms that we're available on, then rate and review. And again, drop me or Dom a message on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, um, and, and let us know what you're thinking or what you want talking about. And um, we'll be back either the back end of this week or the start of next week for just a general catch up. And then we will have a more detailed um, preview vid ahead of the Preston game, probably after one of us has been down to Rockcliffe and spoken to Michael Carrick and found out what's what, or at least found out what he's willing to tell us about what's what. Um, but enjoy the rest of the international break. Uh, thanks for your support. Thanks for watching. We will see you again soon here at You Are My Borough.